podcast or tuning in, yeah, whatever you want to call it, in this episode of Jay Coop's Church, man, we got to go ahead and talk about game one of the first round between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks. So my it's Los Angeles Clippers, Clippers, or should I say your Los Angeles Clippers, came out victorious in a very, very unexpected fashion. Man. So without further ado, man, let's get straight back to this video. So as I mentioned, man, the Los Angeles Clippers ended up pulling this game out against the Dallas Mavericks, 109 to 97, and they were up by as many as 26 at halftime. It was 30 to 56 in favor of the Los Angeles Clippers at halftime, and they ended up getting the job done without Kawhi Leonard. You know what I'm saying? And hey, man, there was a lot of speculation all week going into this game if Kawhi Leonard would play or not. And he ended up, you know, not playing in typical Kawhi Leonard fashion. But the Clippers, you know, put enough, you know, into this game. They got enough from the role players and from their star players to win this game and in game one. So I couldn't be more happy. I couldn't be more satisfied with the performance that they, you know, they did yesterday. They played with a lot of aggression, a lot of heart. They played with a lot of desperation. And a team that's missing their best player, man, that's exactly how you, you have to play as desperate. You know what I'm saying? But this may have been one of the most complete games the Clippers have played all season. And guess what, man? It came in perfect timing. Game one of the NBA playoffs, man, the Clippers stepped it up in perfect timing. Even though they've been struggling over the past month, month and a half, especially without Kawhi Leonard on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So they've just been holding on by a thread, it feels like, you know, just from the last half of the season. But... I'll tell you what, man, the Clippers, they came out in this game one against the Mavericks and showed people exactly why they should be, you know, considered a title favorite. You know what I'm saying? Even without Ka Kawhi Leonard. Now, do I think we could win a championship without Kawhi Leonard? Obviously, no. But this team is still, you know, very, very real enough to the point where they can come out and beat a team in the first round without their best player. You know what I'm saying? So that just goes to show you the depth of this team especially when you have a guy like Russell Westbrook who was huge in this game coming off the bench you know what I'm saying it was just it was super lovely to see you know what I'm saying but I will say <laughs> James Hardman he was the player to get stuff kicked off for the Los Angeles Clippers in this game at the end of the first quarter man he ended up having 11 points and three assists I believe he was like two or two from three or no it was three of three from three at this point the score was 22 to 34 in favor of the Los Angeles Clippers going into the second quarter. But the Clippers continued to lay the smack down on them in the second quarter, man. Like I said, they was already up by a pretty substantial amount, man. It was 22 to 34 at the, at the end of the first quarter. But then going into the second quarter, man, that's when the Clippers still continued to, to put on a run, man. It was around the 10 minute mark when the Dallas Mavericks called their first timeout of the second quarter after the Clippers just went on a 6-0 run to open up the second quarter, man. It was 40-22 to in favor of the Clippers at this point, and they just continued to pour it on. Like I said, man, the Dallas Mavericks, they did, you know, score four quick points, but other than that, man, the Clippers just continued to go on a run. James Harden, you know, he was just doing everything for the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, he hit another three around the six-minute mark in the second quarter to put himself four for four from three at this point. He had... You know, 12 points just off threes, just like that. Very quick for us, you know what I'm saying? But he was just doing a little bit of everything for us. But even he just continued to go down and, you know, go to the go to the bucket and continue to make plays for us. It was around the five-minute mark when James Harden got this and one to put us up 50 to 28, you know what I'm saying? And at this point, man, he already had 20 points in the first half. So he was doing a little bit of everything, but at halftime, man, it was 56 to 30 in favor of the Los Angeles Clippers. And it was, you know, you couldn't couldn't be any more happy if you were a Clippers fan. You had guys like Zubak who came out in the first half, had 12 points, 10 rebounds on six of nine shooting. And like I said, James Harden, man, he had 20 points, four assists on six of 10 shooting. So he had, and also four for four from three in the first half. So he had about as efficient of a first half as you could possibly have. But the Clippers were up by 26 at the half. They were did all this while Paul George was only, record. he only recorded five points, four rebounds, two assists, shooting two of seven from the field at this point. So the, the Clippers should have been super thankful that James Harden had 20 points at the half because I'll tell you what, if he didn't, we probably would have been, you know, struggling just as much as the Mavs because the Mavs, they weren't doing any better from, you know, 
from the field in the first half, Luka himself was 4 of 13 from the field. You know what I'm saying? With only 11 points and 8 rebounds at the half. Kyrie Irving was also struggling. He only had 6 points at the half, shooting 1 of 6 from the field. So, yeah, man, that was pretty much the story of the first half. But I will say, even though the Clippers were up as many as 26 in the first half, the Dallas Mavericks started to put... A little, they started to put it together a little bit in the second half where they ended up scoring 34 points in the third quarter and then 33 points in the fourth quarter. So they were definitely, you know, coming back just a little bit. It got to within a 14-point game, I believe. But uh, honestly, it still wasn't enough. Kyrie Irving had, you know, 20 points himself in the third quarter, and they were still down by a substantial amount. Now, I will say, man, when it does come to the takeaways of this game, because I can sit here and go through the stats all I want, but just from what the eye test was telling me, man, I will say that I don't expect the Dallas Mavericks to shoot 30%, you know, from the field, or no, from the three, excuse me, and also just shoot 38% from the field. So I expect them in game two to perform a little bit better. And I also, you know, I expect, you know, Kyrie Irving to not have as bad as the first half as he did. And I expect Luka Dantage to knock down some of the shots that he was taking in the first half that he was missing. Now, I will say, you could sit here and say, like, those are shots they normally make, which is true because Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic are two incredible shot takers and they're two incredible shot makers. But I will say, man, the Clippers' defense was damn, it was pretty good, man. There was, you know, a couple plays. You know, where it could have been better the Clippers defense, but for the most part, man, you know, Terrence, man, Amir Coffey, Paul George, they were doing exactly what they were supposed to defensively, hence why these guys had such a bad, you know, first half, the Dallas Mavericks. And I will say, I don't expect them to play this bad offensively, but defensively, listen, I know the Dallas Mavericks were one of the best defenses the last half of the season, but if you go back and look at their competition, and I'm not even sitting here trying to hate, but I believe they played six teams that were actual legit playoff teams, and they've only beat one of those teams out of the six teams, and that team was the Denver Nuggets when Kyrie Irving had that hook shot from the free throw. You know what I'm saying? So I will say their defense, I mean, team defense is very important, but when your two main star players aren't known for being defensive players, I mean, I could see, you know, Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic being taken advantage of just as much as, you know, you would expect Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving to take advantage of James Harden and Paul George. You know what I'm saying? But for us, I feel like it's a little further extent just due to the fact that those guys aren't known for being defenders. Luka Doncic, he was getting blown by like a motherfucker by James Harden last night. And you already know Luka Doncic can't really guard Paul George like that. Like, let's not even have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? But, and I'm not really trying to take anything away from the Dallas Mavericks. I'm just saying that their defense, you know, at, may not be as good as it looked just because they were playing teams that weren't as good you know what i'm saying but once you get put into a seven game series with a team like the los angeles clippers where you're gonna have to have your best players defend it's not always gonna look as good you know what i'm saying like those guys are gonna be put in the actions like i said in the the dallas mavericks versus los angeles clippers preview if you have it man go check that out very insightful information i thought especially from previous series so make sure you guys go check that out but i will say man this game overall, it was a little bit outliers on both sides because the Clippers did shoot 50% from three, but you gotta think, man, the Clippers were one of the best three-point shooting teams all season. So I feel like that's more likely to happen. You know what I'm saying? But I will say the Dallas Mavericks, they're not gonna shoot 30% from three again. But I will say, man, the role players did not look as good as they did in the last half of the season. Daniel Gafford, really he really was getting played off the floor in the first quarter because Zubak was just going directly at him and he's taller than him, he's bigger than him and you know as good as a defender as Daniel Gafford was the last half of the season getting averaging like five blocks a game you know it's different when you got a guy like Zubak who's actually a really good post player you know coming at you all the time you know what I'm saying so the Dallas Mavericks man I feel like they're they definitely are you know they got the pressure on them at this point because they were expected to come out and win this game in game one without no Kawhi Leonard so the fact that we pulled it out, you know what I'm saying? This just puts more of the pressure on the Dallas Mavericks and also their coaching staff. Because another thing that I that I hate to bring up if you're a Dallas Mavericks fan is I really do not trust y'all coach, man. As, as good as of a player as Jason Kidd was, man, that has just not been, you know, the same situation when it comes to his coaching. Because I don't know, man. I just feel like he, when it comes to adjustments and stuff like that, 
we've seen it we've seen him coach before you know on the milwaukee bucks back then and stuff like that but and i feel like he's done a lot better with the dallas mavericks but i just still feel like he just may not be the right coach for this team i'm not gonna lie um but other than that man like i said there's outliers for both sides like i said for the dallas if you're a dallas mavericks fan watching this I don't expect you guys to shoot 30% from three. You guys are going to shoot a little bit better. And who knows, we might shoot a little bit worse from three since we do did shoot 50% from three this game. But you could also, if you're the Clippers side of things, man, you could also say, I don't see Norman Powell having as bad as a game that he had too. He only had like five points total, he played like 30 something minutes, and he really didn't perform that well. You know what I'm saying? He had like two turnovers or something like that. And even Paul George, who started to heat up in the fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying? He only had five points at halftime. So I expect Paul George to also produce a little bit more. So I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand. But I will say, you know, Luka Doncic really had a terrible night. I know he had 33 points, but he was struggling. He was like one of seven from three in the first half. So you obviously expect that to get better in game two. But yeah, man, we're just gonna have to see a game two because I will say, it is still in Los Angeles for game two. After that, they go back to Dallas in Friday to play game three. And who knows what Kawhi Leonard's status is going to be like. I'm not going to lie, man. As a Clippers fan, I'm not expecting Kawhi Leonard to play at all in this series just because, you know, just due to his history and him never playing in times when it actually matters. So, you know, I love Kawhi, but I just don't see him playing and I don't even... Honestly, I don't even know if I'd want him to at this point because say he does come back, he's probably not going to be 100% or even really close to be, you know, game ready. Especially, I mean, he could play the game, but especially in playoffs where he's going to have to get down, you know, playing a lot more minutes than he normally would have to. I just, I, I don't know if it'd even be a good idea to bring Kawhi back at this, at this point, you know what I'm saying? Just due to the fact that he could possibly get hurt again knowing Kawhi Leonard and also the fact that who knows what his rhythm might be like you know what i'm saying but yeah man this pretty much does wrap up game one i'm super excited for game two you know tomorrow in los angeles tuesday night we're gonna see how this game goes hopefully 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 my los angeles clippers can pull this game out again without Kawhi leonard man i'm not gonna lie man i feel pretty confident as a clippers fan after what i've seen in game one like i don't expect the dallas mavericks to be that trash again but they definitely look beatable. I will say that the Dallas Mavericks look beatable. They look a lot more beatable than people were trying to make it out to be going into the series. And I kind of figured that. Like I just told you, bro, they played six playoff teams since the All-Star break, and they've only beat one of those teams. Like, let that sink in for just a second. I know all the Dallas Mavericks fans, oh, we got Daniel Gafford. Oh, we got P.J. Washington. <laughs> I tell you what, hey, Hey, go go watch what PJ Washington did did yesterday, and tell me how you feel about that, Dallas Mavericks fans, because I'm very curious. And tell me how you guys feel about Daniel Gafford getting played off the floor in the first six minutes of the game, because those new acquisitions you all got at the trade deadline ain't looking too sweet right now. You know what I'm saying? But hey, man, that's what it's a seven game series for. We're just gonna have to see. But until next time, man, peace out. Enjoy basketball. Keep bucket discussing. In the jungle like I'm Conan, kind of a buff hands Switch the flow like it was broken, I'm on the road man Making plays just like DeRozan I shoot my shot, and that shit wetter than the ocean I brag a lot, but with the wind and come the boasting I made a lot, from them apartments that I sold in He didn't make it up to college, sold them streets when he enrolled in I know I'm a scholar from the moments that I was exposed in